a strange season. The final episode of Invincible Season 2 follows in the path of the rest of the season by continuing with the odd decisions. We all agree that the mid-season break was a very bad idea, breaking the flow to the point that I didn't remember who these characters were and where their story was currently situated. Now the season finale ends with a whimper. One of the most anticipated villains is defeated in the most underwhelming way possible. Turned from a sympathetic, misunderstood character into an undeniable villain in a matter of moments. My memory of the comic has Mark enduring a marathon torture test during this part of the plot. But the way this episode is put together, you really don't get any sense that it was more than a mild inconvenience. Time travel and multiversal travel is just invented out of nowhere and glossed over. Something that should have massive ramifications for the entire universe or multiverse is just treated as a convenience to progress the plot. Poor music choices continue with a mega hit used in a way that triggers memories that I don't think the producers intended. Oh, and there's a scene that appears to be put into the episode just to make a joke about sexism. That was weird. One of the few remaining plot lines that has any kind of stakes behind it is resolved in a manner that makes you realize that none of this matters. Something bad happens, we can just undo it. I was very disappointed with this episode. It had so much potential and squandered it. I'm giving episode 8 of Invincible Season 2 a 7 out of 10. There was very little payoff and I'm not really feeling any level of anticipation for next season. This feels like one of those series where someone tells you, hey, you do know that Invincible Season 3 has started, right? And you then realise they're already two episodes in. For Season 2 as a whole, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. It's so hard to remember what happened back in November, almost six months ago, when this season started. Luckily I have my notes, so I can see that there were some amazing episodes mixed in with some average. The highs were very high, and the lows were more around the point of average TV. The mid-season gap was just a massive momentum killer though. The highlight for season 2 was probably the resolution of the whole Amber issue, it's a shame that it took until the second last episode for her to actually feel like a fleshed out character when she realised that maybe dating a superhero wasn't the best thing in the world. Unfortunately, we'll probably have Amber replaced by Adam Eve, but maybe they'll be more interesting as they understand what they are getting themselves into. Anyway, let's get into the spoilers. Seeing as this is the end of Invincible for the next 12 months, I guess we won't be seeing much of each other for a while. Be a dear and hit that subscribe button and you'll be able to come back next season to see if my hot takes have developed beyond surface level analysis. In the meantime, we have the Fallout series next week, all episodes releasing at once. I'll probably just do what I did with the Masters of the Universe and do an overview video and a review per week for the following eight weeks. I'm also nearing the end of the brilliant Shogun series, so if you want to see some really good television, I recommend you subscribe to whatever service lets you watch Shogun in your region. Okay, let's get this out of the way. The infamous Struggle Snuggle is not in Season 2 of Invincible. Half of this episode is the continuation of the post credit scene from last episode. The other half is dealing with the aftermath. Quick scene of Nolan beating up on his jailers. Then General Craig enters and they have a bit of banter about how Nolan is fit enough to be executed. But Nolan says he's surprised that Craig would come all this way. He was there when you were captured and he's been interrogating you this whole time. What do you even mean? Did they have someone else as his interrogator and then make a last minute call to swap out the model but didn't have time to rewrite this scene? This scene ends with the worst music selection of all. Fatboy Slim's weapon of choice. I don't know about in the US of A, but here in Australia, the local TV networks love to use this song to promote their terrible new sketch comedy shows. It brings back too many cringy memories. Here we get into the meat of the episode, and it starts off well. Angstrom has Debbie and Oliver hostage. At first, I thought it was weird that he had them hostage with a neck snapping position, but I feel that's covered by him saying, he has extra strength now, and Mark could intercept a bullet, maybe? Levi talks about how Invincible did this to him, and he's upset that Invincible doesn't recognize him. I feel like if you're a genius who spanned multiple dimensions, you should probably expect this, but I guess he's become a clownish villain for the purposes of this scene. 
Levi's powers I find a bit confusing. Like he seems to need to power them up before use, yet his actions suggest that he can open a portal in an instant. Which is it? So anyway, Invincible rushes him and it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Levi creates a portal between them and he's gone. I wonder, could he do a 180 and go back through? Invincible is teleported to a dimension of talking dinosaurs. Luckily they can talk English and not another language or some made up language so Invincible can understand them but he never tries to reason with them he just remains mute. Apparently in this dimension humans and dinosaurs coexisted. Invincible does the smart thing when a land based animal attempts to attack you and flies around mere feet from the ground instead of flying straight up. It never was explained how Angstrom Levy knows where a portal will appear in another dimension. How does he know where to put the portal right behind Mark as he's backing away? So Mark ends up back in his lounge room and Levy has Oliver. He tells Mark that he doesn't have to worry about him hurting his family, unless he feels he has to, so just die. I can't work out what Angstrom wants. Does he want to kill Mark or torture him? Or both? Because if he wants to kill him, he could do it easily. Same with torture or he could abandon him in some barren universe. But I guess he has to keep checking in on him because he's a stupid villain. Mark gets sent to a dimension where there's a Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. I get that it was in the comic, but you could have left it out if you don't get the rights. Feels like it was included because it had to be. Nice juxtaposition of Levy chastising Debbie for lying to Oliver by telling him that everything is going to be all right with a parallel angstrom telling his son the same thing. I assume that this chromatic aberration symbolizes the memories of other angstroms that were combined during the explosion that rendered him a monster, bleeding into his mind during a moment of duress. We're shown scenes of how much of a bad dude Invincible is in most of the other universes. Damn, he got that booty. Mark then gets teleported into the Walking Dead universe. Kirkman wrote both, so I assume it's The Walking Dead. Debbie puts Angstrom in his place by telling him he's just upset because this is the one dimension where Mark is good and Angstrom is the bad guy. He proves her wrong by throwing a woman around the room, snapping her arm and threatening to use a baby as an unchuck. If there's one sound I hate to hear, it's a baby crying. Mark is sent between dimensions. We get the dimension of Omnipotus. We get a dimension with Batman, Cavemen, Mad Max. Mark refuses to enter the portal, so Angstrom sticks his head through and Mark charges him. Once he sees what he's done to Debbie, it's on. It's about this time that the episode starts to fall apart. Maybe as a comic where the issues come out monthly, this works better, because you have time to forget small things. But as an episode of TV, it's right there in front of you. Angstrom gets dragged through the road and survives. He's then shown to have the strength to break Invincible's bones. The doctors who rebuilt him made him stronger. Then why was Debbie able to cut you with a fragment of pottery? Angstrom kicks Mark's butt across multiple dimensions and then tells him that he won't be happy until he kills Mark with his bare hands and kills his family. Well, that's the magical word. Like Vin Diesel, Mark realizes the most important thing is family. So now that his family is threatened, he's able to kick Levy's butt. Not that he couldn't before. Suddenly Levy is powerless to stop him. He can fend off blows, but creating a portal is too much for him. What is it with these changing power levels? It's all so inconsistent. Was anyone else disappointed that they refused to show the aftermath of Mark's beatdown on Angstrom Levy? Come on now. This isn't a Saturday morning cartoon. You could show his dismembered corpse. Mark's upset because he didn't think he'd be able to kill him. But come on, man. Once the supervillain threatens your family and has shown it's a credible threat, I think all options are valid. Debbie's pretty tough. I'd have passed out from blood loss long before now. But the GDI arrives and they take their sweet time before offering medical assistance. Couldn't they teleport her out of there? Mark realizes that he was teleported to a barren planet and he's killed the only way back. So now he's stranded. Nolan's getting beaten by Craig and for some reason we get a scene of the Viltrumites telling Nolan how much they looked up to him. 
Maybe they can be swayed to become the good guys? Anyway, Alan is aboard the ship and he can telepathically talk to Nolan. But I thought anyone could hear Alan, not just the person he's talking to, but other people in the room. So wouldn't the guards overhear Alan's side of the conversation? So Mark is stuck on this barren planet and he has to come to terms with that fact. For all of two minutes. Did you really think this was the end? No, we can't have consequences in Invincible. The Guardians of the Globe bust through a portal and rescue Mark from his fate. Eve looks terrible. Looks like she's been smoking a pack a day for 10 years. So apparently the GDI has developed time travel and multiversal travel, as these are the Guardians from 20 years in the future. I guess Eve is meant to look miserable because she's been missing out on all that invincible dong all these years. Robot doesn't want to alter time, but he's just going to insert the most powerful superhero into a time period that they were never part of. That won't change much. Eve tells Mark that she loves him and that he should tell past her either a yes or a no. That green light really does her no favours. Weird that no one tells her to stop. Turns out Eve is a terminal case of one-itis. Wait, Rex is robot? Robot used Rex's DNA to make Rudy, but is Rex going to start wearing Robot's body? Do all of the Grayson family have weak right eyes? They all have a puffy right eye on this episode. Maybe the animators can't do left eyes. Mark's worried he's becoming his father. Shows always do this. When someone has doubts, the people who are trying to comfort them use the most vague, wishy-washy language instead of just coming out with it. Mark's worried he lost it and killed someone. Tell him he's justified. That there's a difference between enslaving a planet and killing a maniac. It just annoys me so much. Rudy apologised to Amanda for getting into her personal issues. They seem like they've sorted it out just by talking. Sometimes people just need to do that. I knew it. I knew there'd be a Kate Zero. But like I said earlier, that makes three people who died in the Lizard League fight who have now come back from the dead. If you're wondering why she's in uniform still, I assumed it was part of the curse. Because all of her duplicates have the uniform on. What I'm wondering is, why send the Zero copy out? Just make a copy and send them. Here's the weird sexism joke scene. Two female archaeologists are digging up a tomb in the desert, and one of them is super strong. She makes a quip about how it was passed down through female relatives and that you couldn't be a superhero in the 50s unless you wore a bathing suit. So she lifts the door to the tomb and they get trapped inside. They discover one of the women's dead father. The body raises out of the sarcophagus and wants a male body. And that's it. That's the end of the joke. They could have got a bit more edgy with it and had one of them be a trans man, but that would have been a bit too much. Imagine the furor that would cause. Invincible is rage flying. He's still upset about Angstrom leaving. Their house is rebuilt and Mark finally comes to the realisation that he doesn't need to go to university. His job is now a superhero and he'll be better off devoting his time to that. At least Nolan's job was author so he could drop it in the blink of an eye. Mark goes to visit Adam Eve, but she's no longer in her treehouse. She's in the bridge that the Teen Titans use to inhabit. She lets Mark know that she has two shoulders. It's not the shoulders I was looking at. Mid-credits and we get a scene of Alan and Nolan talking and Nolan realises he misses his wife. Oh god. You just reminded me about the comics. That's one of the worst bits. What happens with Nolan and Debbie. I'm cringing already. This ending scene has me not looking forward to next season. I hated the mopey Debbie presented at the start of this season. It was so boring. Bring back Anissa. That's all I'm excited for. But now we have two relationships on the boil. Nolan and Debbie and Mark and Eve. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Oh god. And Amanda and Rudy. So like I said, I'm giving this episode a 7 out of 10. Angstrom Levy was so inconsistent. He turned out to be a rather pathetic villain. Not enough to carry a season. His battle with Invincible promised so much. With the intelligence and experience of a thousand Levies, and he ends up in a fist fight? And a fist fight that he was ill-equipped for? That's just terrible writing. 
and his power levels kept changing. One minute he's getting injured by a mortal woman, the next is impervious to damage from a superhero. He died like a punk, and Invincible getting stranded on that barren planet, only to be rescued two minutes later. That should have been an episode of him trying different things to get away. The Kate version 0.0 thing was foreseeable, but it also made the entire Lizard League fight entirely pointless. We lost three superheroes that day, and now that's all been undone. This removes all stakes from future battles. We should have had a teaser for the Sequid invasion. That plotline was entirely forgotten in this episode, the season finale. The only thing I'm looking forward to from season 3 is Anissa and Freddie Mercury. I wonder if either of them will make the journey from the comic to TV intact. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.